I was just thinking that humans generally like things that are new, but not that new. And that you, that <laughs> yeah. probably having the familiar uh, tune. And then if you hear something clever, I think the biggest danger is cheesiness. But um, but if you have something clever, and as Adam says, anchored in the brand, if it's a tongue-in-cheek brand, then it's a tongue-in-cheek lyric, that'll work. Um, and maybe it adds freshness rather than clutter. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangel. Let's delve a little deeper. Here's the first part of my conversation with Gina Isham, Adam Plyman, Colleen Fahey, and John Sanfilippo about audio branding for the holidays. This next two-part episode is a real treat. Recently, I had a conversation in a LinkedIn audio event with four very knowledgeable and talented audio branding experts about what companies can do to make the most of their audio brand over the holidays. My panelists were Gina Isham, a sonic strategist, author, and audio branding thought leader with Dreamer Productions, Adam Plyman, music and audio creative director, and Grammy-nominated engineer with Play Audio Agency. Colleen Fahey, author and U.S. Managing Director of Cesium Song, and John Sanfilippo, a sound strategist with his company Soundwise. All four had a lot to say about this subject, and we discussed what companies should have done prior to the holidays, what trends they were seeing in the area of audio branding, and what they thought companies could do with their audio branding to prepare for the new year. It was a fascinating discussion, and I think you'll get a lot from listening. As always, if you have questions for my guests, you're welcome to reach out through the links in the show notes. If you have questions for me, visit audiobrandingpodcast.com, where you'll find a lot of ways to get in touch. Plus, subscribing to the newsletter will let you know when the new podcasts are available. And if you're getting some value from listening, the best ways to show your support are to share this podcast with a friend and leave an honest review. Both those things really help, and I'd love to feature your review on future podcasts. You can leave one either in written or in voice format from the podcast's main page. I would so appreciate that. And now, here's my conversation with Gina Isham, Adam Plyman, Colleen Fahey, and John Sanfilippo about audio branding for the holidays. Well, thank you everyone for being here, especially to my esteemed panelists here, which uh, they have very graciously donated their time to join us and talk about this particular topic, which I think is very apropos considering the time of year. <laughs> Although uh, it was pointed out to me that I think it's a little late for people to start working on their audio branding for the holidays, for these holidays. So really what we're discussing here today is where you could go with holidays in the future and what you might want to consider when you're thinking about audio branding for the holidays. So I just want to get us started with a bit of a question here. And uh, John, I'm going to start with you. If you could just introduce yourself a little bit and then tell us what you think companies should have done before the holidays to get the most out of their audio brand. If anything. Yes. No, thanks, Jody. My name is John Sanfilippo. I run a sonic branding agency not too far from Jody. Jody's in the Toronto area. I am about two hours east of her in Kingston, Ontario. Um, in terms of sonic branding, I think you sort of alluded to it a moment ago. Uh, it, obviously, we're a little too late, maybe, in the game if you're thinking about this season for sonic branding and, and holidays and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, it really, to me, it starts with having a really solid sonic identity to start with and allowing that to grow and then adapting it to different seasons like the holiday season with, you know, the, the, uh, the holiday imagery, I suppose you could call it. Obviously, sound is not visual, but sound is very evocative. And depending on how you use those sounds, they can create various images, such as holiday sounds. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, 
Uh, Adam, how about you? Where where would you go with that? And if you could also introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, so I'm the creative director here at Play Audio Agency. I am just south of y'all um, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we have offices here as well as off Austin, Texas. Um, and and yeah, so uh, it's to your point, John. The the audio brand has to be there first, right? The identity has to be there first. Um, if it's nice and flexible, it's going to be able to flex to the season. Um, you know, I, I look down at at kind of what we've seen our clients do over the holidays, and I think it's all about preparation for flexibility, um, understanding emotionally what spaces you're able to live in as a as a as a brand really empowers you to be able to know what sort of level of sentimentality or excitement um, or just general happiness you uh, holistically feels authentic to you as a brand um, in these sort of seasons. And I think it's, you know, a holiday season for sure. Um, you know, th this is definitely a priority this time of year, but it also goes through summertime and it goes through all the different characters and attributes of your brand. Um, so this is just one extension of it. Um, I, I, I liken back to our days of, of working um, years ago in jingles and uh, just listening to the brands add sleigh bells to their jingle. And suddenly <laughs> that works as a holiday jingle yeah. um, is we've we've come a long way in the understanding of how people expect to hear from us as brands. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's all about preparation, understanding flex flexibility early on. Um, okay. Seeing some good examples of it this year, too. Oh, great. Um, I'll ask you about those examples later. Definitely. I, I do want to hear about examples that you're particularly impressed with. But yeah, yeah, sleigh bells don't answer all problems. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Colleen, love to have your perspective on this as well. And if you could just briefly introduce yourself as well, that would be great. Okay. My name is Colleen Fahey, and I'm in Chicago. I'm the U.S. Managing Director of CZM Son, which is a sonic branding agency that's global, and I've brought it to the United States and Canada. And um, I think one of the things that you have to be aware of as a brand is how small the repertory of standards are in s songs around the holidays and how overused they can get. So be they in your television advertising or in your store, uh, people are hearing the same tunes over and over. And I think that's a problem for brand differentiation. So as John and Adam have said, if you have your own sound, then you can adapt your sound to a holiday sound without even using sleigh bells. You might use a choral way of singing it or something like that, maybe not even singing. Um, but you can make your brand actually a relief to the poor people who are listening to the same songs over and over. <laughs> and the people that I worry the most about are the employees of retailers of every kind, oh, banks, yeah. uh, stores where people are Christmas shopping, because instead of having as many songs as they usually get to choose from in the air around them, they have to listen to these jingling songs over and over. And it adds to the stress of the holiday season. So there are many ways to deal with that. And one is to not play whole songs, but to play little winks of songs, to acknowledge the holiday, but seven seconds is enough. And then go back to your playlist. Uh, seven seconds that is your branded sound is even better because then people will remember your brand and associate it with the holidays. Um, I wanna tell you one thing that people forget, e-cards. A lot of brands are sending out e-cards to thank customers. And you can take your brand sound and make it a holiday sound of it. And, um, and you'll have a lovely, charming way to express yourself in a branded way without being overwhelming. Oh, I love that. What a great idea, Colleen. <laughs> And yeah, I, I totally feel for all of the people working in shops right now because the nonstop Christmas music is just probably driving them batty. <laughs> and it starts a it month beforehand. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Um, yeah, uh, Gina, how about you? Uh, you want to introduce yourself uh, briefly and then also weigh in on this topic? <laughs> 
Sure. Um, I just wanted to say, yes, that is true. I have done customer service for many years in my life, and it is a slow, painful way of torture (laughs) (laughs) to have to listen to these same five or six songs playing over and over again. I used to work in Meyer and Frank, which was a subsidiary of Macy's. And oh, my goodness, it was intense. And that was not even I think I, I think I gave up around Thanksgiving time. But it was it was bad enough. Um, so hi, yes, I, my name is Gina Isham, and I have a company called Dreamer Productions, where I consult and strategize about sound and sound strategy. I also have my sister site, Sound and Marketing Learning, where I educate, and so I have a podcast called Sound and Marketing, and I also have eBooks and courses and lots of free resources on the SoundandMarketing.com site. So um, yeah, my way in on this, I think I I. I'm going to like really mirror what Colleen said, because for one, it is too late to start for this holiday season, obviously. But I think that it's more clever and more creative when you come up with sounds for holidays that are branded, but don't necessarily have jingle bells, right? So like there's other words that you can personify with the holidays, like family, warm, uh, you know, nurturing, uh, Uh, memories, those sorts of things. And I think that if you can find the heart of your actual brand persona and personify that into the holidays without going the cookie cutter generic way, you will stand out and you will be a relief from what other people are listening to constantly. I mean, the music starts in our house right after Thanksgiving dinner and it doesn't end until, you know, pretty much (laughs) December 31st. Yeah. So it is nice to have more creative ways for people to acknowledge the holidays because we're going to acknowledge it. Um, but not just oversaturate the market. And, you know, I have to say that as a Canadian, our Thanksgiving is a month before yours. So imagine how long (laughs) we've been listening. (laughs) Well, that's like in America when people start it right after Halloween then. Like that's that's insatiable. I can't stand that. That's too early. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And it gets worse and worse every year. Uh, Yeah, because you're right. We hear the same songs over and over and over again. I'm with Colleen. Seven seconds of each is enough for me. (laughs) Absolutely. Like, because I mean, it's just the reminder. That's all that we're trying to do, right? It's Mm -hmm. the reminder. We're not trying to drill anything into anyone. We're not trying to convince people that it's the holiday season. We already know know. that. (laughs) Yeah. I think they're aware. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Quick question Do you know anyone else who could benefit from hearing more about how powerful sound can be? If so, would you mind sharing this podcast with them? It would mean so much to me. Now, I'll stop interrupting and let you get back to the show. There's a lot, I guess, that um, that can come up in this season, audio branding-wise. Specifically, I'm wondering what trends all of you are seeing. And, uh, uh, John, what is there a particular trend that you're seeing this year that, I don't know, maybe has been different from other years? Oh, geez. I, I was hoping you wouldn't direct that to me. I can't think of any specific... <laughs> friends right off the bat. I, I would defer to anyone else if they have. So I'm sure I'll think of something later. But uh, sure. Yeah. Adam, what right. do you think? Uh, Anything well, else? one of the things. Oh, OK. That yeah, go ahead. Colin. I'm yeah. seeing, one of the things that I'm seeing is a lot of this research that's coming out of System One, you know, this company that used to be called Brain Juicer mm-hmm. that tests for uh, for whether it's hitting people emotionally uh, and there, especially in the UK where they do most of their tests, there are so many story-based advertisements that use all kinds of wonderful heart-tugging narratives and cute pets and animated characters and usually a song that you know that's also very emotional. And they, they are saying that the more emotional response you get, the higher your sales will be, either short term or long term, depending on what emotions you evoke. So this this story based advertising, they say that all the best ads happen at the at Christmas time, but they run for the shortest amount of time because then they get cut down when Christmas is over. Uh, so that that seems to be a trend that's going on, at least in Europe, and uh, it's it. 
usually comes with songs you already know, but aren't necessarily Christmas songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Colleen, I'm, I'm seeing that oft- often too. And I, I got to say, I look forward to it. Um, although what I don't look forward to is them actually getting me like when I'm getting ready in the morning and like, <laughs> like making and, you and, cry. And, yeah. Giving me pause. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Um, they know, do that to me all the time. Kids move up and yeah, move <laughs> up and move out and then come back home for the holidays and man, you'll get me every time. Um, but yeah, I mean that, that, that plays into the emotionally connected consumers, you know, two times likely to, to, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be, it's, it's two times more worth to your brand. So, um, you know, why not? Why can't we take these stories? And, and a lot of great brands do that. Um, tell great stories. I think, I think it would be nice to see um, in those scenarios more, you know, brand integration. Um, I know there's some spots that are definitely yes. running heavy, heavy around here that I wish I saw more brand integration outside the visual realm, um, even from a logo standpoint, there's a few grocers and retailers that I think would really benefit from that. Um, that could take that that great equity that they just built through these moments of uh, especially high ad spend or high production value and roll and move that forward. So um, there's there's definitely hope in that space. But yeah, I'm, yes. a, I'm a softie. Uh, you're a softie. That's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, I'd cry in commercials all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it. But yeah, uh, um, audio wise, though, it's interesting that uh, a well, it depends on the spot. But uh, but I have seen a lot of really emotional advertising that they they have a very emotional story to tell, but it doesn't tie into their brand because there's no audio element from their brand or it's really on the outskirts. And then all you get is like an end card, you know? And yeah. so it, you kind of have end to. Card with... Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of a classic problem with advertising in general is, is a lot of the time you get the, this sort of entertainment value we're talking about, but it doesn't necessarily attach itself to the brand and in the end you remember that sort of sketch almost but you don't create that association a lot of the time and and yeah sound is is a great tool for for building that association and strengthening that brand and strengthening that uh, that emotional connection mm-hmm. yeah i mean i'll often watch those ads and then not remember who it was that was doing the ad by the time the ad's done yep. <laughs> so yeah, that can be that's a problem ads. yeah sorry like Oh, uh, I said like most Super Bowl ads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are um they're entertaining for the most part. Yeah, but you retain the entertainment and not whatever yeah. they were trying to convey a lot of the time. Yeah, exactly. Gina, how about I, I, you? Anything that uh, occurs to you? Well, I keep thinking about current trends and I honestly haven't seen anything too impressive yet this year. Um okay. mm-hmm. but I you know, I'm going to be a contradiction to myself and bring up a really old one that I don't know if it was served in Canada, but I'm sure Colleen and Adam (laughs) remember this. And it's so, so long lasting to me and they play it every year and it's just as good now as it was like whatever, 30 years ago that it started. But the M&M Christmas commercial with the yellow and the red M&M and they find Santa and um, I'll have to send the link to you if you haven't seen it. But it's oh, just please these, do. These two, the two <laughs> M&Ms and they come they come down down the stairs and they find Santa and then they have this confrontation. And all of a sudden, uh, one of the M&Ms goes, he does exist. And then Santa goes, they do exist. And then the <laughs> M&M and Santa, they both yeah. pass out. And then you yeah, hear yeah, the yeah. other the other M&Ms like Santa. And I. <laughs> love this commercial they play uh i think it's like something from the nutcracker maybe the sugar sugar plum fairies or something like mm-hmm. that and it's obviously christmas and it's not their sonic branding or anything but i love that they just totally took this and they have been playing it every year and the year i don't see it played i'm gonna be so sad because it was so <laughs> like memorable and the way that they placed the music over the m M&M speaking it felt like it worked with like the tone of each of these different Eminem's voices, you know, when they both pass out, it's like perfect timing. It's, it's a really good job with a, you know, a music supervisor for sure. But it, it, 
it represents the tone of what you think of for these M&Ms other than like, you know, they're really ridiculous sides of it, but it has heart to it. And I, and I really appreciate that. And although it's a very old ad, I love seeing it every year. Yeah. That's along one the of same the things. Like... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Colleen. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take it. Uh, that's one of the things that the system one research is definitely finding that a good ad with a good emotional connection can be run a thousand times and you don't get exactly. tired of it. There is no wear out. And you could put more of your money to a developing a sonic brand or higher reach and frequency and not keep re re uh, inventing the wheel. Just yeah. keep playing that commercial that Gina loves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think that part of the problem can be that people change their audio brand too quickly. Um, and, and these emotional ads, again, they work for a reason. So if you don't need to change it, why do it? It's, it, it's a, it's a question for the ages, I guess, because, you know, you always wonder why things change before people really remember them. And, uh, yeah. Clearly, this M and M's commercial <laughs> has really got it figured out. <laughs> Adam, did mm -hmm. you have something to add there? Yeah, well, that uh, along those same lines, Jenna. So the the another historic ad, and and I have yet to see it this year. Um, there was a Hershey's ad where it just plays "We wish you a Merry Christmas" as if the Hershey Kisses are bells. And oh, I remember it, that one. Mm -hmm. it, it just plays it. That's all it does is it plays mm -hmm. the song as if it's a little Easter egg for everyone to say, hey, here's we wish you a Merry Christmas. And 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 I like I said, I haven't I've yet to see it this year. That mean that, that said, like most of my anything I watch it would be streaming um, pretty late. So who knows? But um, that one, too, is in, was has always like it, you hear it all the time. And back to Colleen, to your point. I wonder if that's still a good strategy when it comes to the fatigue. You know, it's the same song that we've heard many times. It turns uh, out, according to the research that I've been hearing about, yeah. is there's not fatigue. If you love it, you can yeah. listen to the story over and over. That one in particular, Adam, I think that feels more of a like a give back because it's not I mean, it's selling. Yeah. obviously it's selling. But like you said, all it is, is it's playing the bells and then it's done. And it's like almost a bow. And then, you know, you're welcome yeah. and move on. <laughs> and so it's not offensive. It's very like positive subliminal messaging. Right. You know, it puts a smile yeah. on your face because yeah. it's kind of silly. Um, and it's but it's not offensive at all. And I think that that's yeah. why you can watch it over and over again. I, yeah, I, I kind of love the idea of of how it of how it um it 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 all it, it's it's almost it, it, you know when you license music you're you're borrowing that equity, but it's to the point where you can get Hershey's could get a brand impression by running that spot. I'm in the other room and I'm gonna think Hershey's a little bit whenever I hear that <laughs> played on bells. And they'll get mm -hmm. me from the other room, um, and it's possible that it could be another a different spot as well. Um, granted, it's chances are it's not, but um, I love the idea of, you know, of things being able to cross or spots being able to cross boundaries like that. Sorry, Jonathan. Go, uh, John, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to comment on how uh, I think this whole, and I guess it was designed to do this, but this whole conversation uh, really illustrates the the power of sound and music in general. We, we, earlier we talked about, I, Gina, I think you described it as torturous, all the, the retail music and everything. <laughs> yes. Now we find ourselves in this kind of wholesome, uh, nostalgic kind of uh, kind of vibe as well. Yeah. I it, have a question. The, the other. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, John. No, <laughs> uh, I have a question for you then. Along the same lines of what we're talking about here, what if a brand rewrites the words to a popular song that is a Christmas related song and has their own version of it? Because as a voice actor, I've been asked to sing alternate versions of these <laughs> many, many times in my career. Do you think they work or is it just, you know putting lipstick on a pig. <laughs> I'm, I'm always a, a fan of having your own assets and adapting those. So, I mean, if you had your own song, then you could adapt it to Christmas as opposed to what you're describing. Yeah, something you can take a little more ownership over. 
I think it's done, but I think that, um, I mean, it can be done well, but I think it tends to work better when it's comedic rather than serious. Um, yeah. because you know, like yeah. then oh, yeah. you're acknowledging it's not actually your song that you're just kind of, you know, slapping something else on it. Yeah. But if you can find the relevance to what your message is from the existing song and the delivery is good, I, I, usually that works. Yeah. Most of it is parody. I'm not talking about people being serious with that, <laughs> usually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, well, I, that, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and to it, I think, is as long as your brand can own that comedy, right? It's the brands who step mm -hmm. out, who try to do something that's not within their character, is when it starts to fall flat. Even though the execution could be outstanding, it just if it's off equity, it's off equity. Yeah. I have a good example of that one. Again, it's super old, um, but Western Union, everybody needs some money sometimes. Do you remember that commercial? It's, it's, the, uh, it's mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra, yeah. I think. But it's like, everybody needs some money sometimes. And it's like showing, <laughs> showing all of the things that are going wrong and they have mm -hmm. to call for money. So they're like traveling and their suitcase breaks or whatever. But it like totally worked. But again, a parody because it's silly. But uh, it took me forever to look it up because I was trying to figure it out the, like a couple weeks ago. But it was well done. I thought it was really well done. Yeah, there are times when it can work. Definitely. I'm, I'm wondering specifically around the holidays, <laughs> when we're, when we're trying to not be inundated with all the same songs, how well it works right. when you do a parody, because you've heard that song so many times. I guess when it's different. I don't know, were you going to say something, Colleen? I was just thinking that humans generally like things that are new, but not that new. And that you, that <laughs> yeah. probably having the familiar uh, tune. And then if you hear something clever, I think the biggest danger is cheesiness. But, um, but if you have something clever, and as Adam says, anchored in the brand, if it's a tongue in cheek brand, then it's a tongue in cheek lyric, that'll work. Um, and maybe it adds freshness rather than clutter. It's just a theory. Mm hmm. Yeah, good point. Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website. And I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests, and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that too. Now, back to the podcast. Well, that so, goes back to what, mm -hmm. what you were talking, I can't remember who exactly, maybe it was Colleen, uh, talking about like the whole coming up with the, the brand persona and then just having, yeah, I'm just echoing what you just said, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting to see what's happening and what's been happening over the last years. But but I, I love, Gina, that you mentioned that there's a ad out there that's 30 plus years old that you still love. I think that's fantastic. And I hope that they do keep using it because obviously it works. <laughs> I am going to send it to you right after this and you're going to just be like, oh, my gosh, this is the cutest thing ever. I, I think I've seen it. <laughs> I am almost positive that I've seen it. Uh, go ahead, Adam. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just laughing because I can hear the sound of Santa in my head. <laughs> oh, I can like, play that <laughs> yeah. in my head. It's been it's been there for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, I, definitely... I have something that is not a trend as far as I know, but should be a trend. OK. As every every company is out there trying to become more diverse and more inclusive. Really, Christmas music comes from all over the world in many languages and holiday music in general. And it could, you could make a much bigger palette to choose from if you chose songs that are from the Caribbean and songs from Spain and songs from France. And 
um, and may be popular with different different nationalities, ethnic groups, ages. And it, it wouldn't all have to be the same sort of 50 songs over and over again. You could increase your the perception of your inclusivity by making your Christmas music and your holiday music more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Oh, I love it. Adam, what do you think? Oh, I love it as well. I, 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 I wholly subscribe to that. Um, and it's one of those, I think it'll take time um, situations. Although I got to say, like in our house, um, we, I, I, my kids have gravitated towards all the new Sia Christmas records versus the others that we have um, in our library. And I think it's beautifully refreshing to hear songs that still have uh, now, now granted like the cs stuff is is poppy right and it pushes things and then sometimes you're like is this actually a holiday record um but uh but yeah i agree 100 percent. i love to hear things get pushed forward um even in and especially like the um, on the inclusive inclusivity side um that's a beautiful idea colleen so how do we do this that's the, that's the question well i was thinking in terms of retailers banks you know and mm -hmm. uh that have people streaming in, uh, it would be to help help create guidelines around the music for yeah it, yeah that I I, we, I once did a one long in depth interview with somebody who worked in a Canadian um, department store and it sounded as if the music not only drove her crazy but she also was very aware that the music that was chosen didn't really go with the people who came into the store mm -hmm. it, especially the, the the people who went to the expensive parts of the store so that's another potential thing that needs to be thought about should we have the same music downstairs where the makeup is and people are playing around and when people are contemplating a expensive purchase that maybe would enhance your, I don't know, social status or something. <laughs> um, and instead of thinking of it just in terms of day parting, think of it as zoning um, mm -hmm. and who your audience is in each, in each part of the store or yeah. what your merchandise is. That makes a huge amount of sense. In fact, I, I know that um, Steve Keller, when we had our conversation, I know that he's mentioned how music in different parts of a store will influence what you buy. So um, you probably all know yeah. about the music being played in um, uh, where they're selling wine and they were selling, yeah. you know, they, they were playing French music and then they sold more French wine and then they played German music and they play, they sold more German wine and uh, Larry just mentioned that to me in our uh, discussion, Colleen. So, I mean, it's uh -huh. a pretty popular study. So you would think that a lot more people would use that to their advantage or at least think about it. You know, I, I love your idea of zoning. This has been part one of our interview. I hope you'll tune in next week for part two. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time.